The additive inverse of a, written this way, is the quantity where a plus the additive inverse is equal to 0. The whole number is 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth, and their additive inverses, these things, form the integers. We sometimes refer to the integers as signed numbers, and we say that a number like 7 is positive. And you might ask, well, where's the sign? And so we could write this as plus 7. Meanwhile, a number like the additive inverse of 3 is negative, where we have the sign in front of it, which is read as a negative sign. And here's an important idea. How you speak influences how you think. In previous courses, you probably read something like this as negative 3. And if we think about this as a signed number, it is the signed number, negative 3. But remember, the important property of this number is that it is an additive inverse. If we add it to a, we get 0. And so it's helpful to read this as the additive inverse of a and not as negative a. It can be helpful to have some sort of picture of what's going on when we're working with signed numbers. And so we can represent the additive inverse using what's called a chip model. Why is it called a chip model? Well, that's because we have positive chips representing positive amounts and negative chips representing negative amounts. And what's important here is that a positive and a negative chip can cancel each other out. If we put them together, we get nothing. Let's see how that works. Let's add 5 plus 3. Now, since this is an addition, we're putting two things together. 5, well, that's 5 positive chips. And 3, that's 3 more positive chips. And all together, we have 8 positive chips. And so we can write our sum 5 plus 3 equals 8. How about additive inverse of 5 plus additive inverse of 3? Again, since this is an addition, we're putting two things together. Here, additive inverse of 5, well, that's 5 negative chips. Additive inverse of 3 is 3 more negative chips. And all together, we have 8 negative chips. So let's compare and generalize. We found that 5 plus 3 is equal to 8, and the additive inverse of 5 plus the additive inverse of 3 is the additive inverse of 8. And the thing to notice here is that the numbers are actually the same in both cases. Here we have a 5, 3, and an 8, and here we have a 5, a 3, and an 8, and the only difference between the two is that here we're dealing with the additive inverses. And this suggests the following. If I'm taking any real numbers, if I want to add two additive inverses, well, I'll just add the numbers and take the additive inverse of the sum. So, for example, additive inverse 15 plus additive inverse of 7. Well, since they're both additive inverses, I can add the 15 and the 7 together. and take the additive inverse of the sum. What if I add 5 and the additive inverse of 3? So 5 we could represent by 5 positive chips, and then we'll add 3 negative chips. And the important thing about the chips is that a positive and a negative chip can combine and cancel each other out. And so we can remove a pair of positive and negative chips, another pair, and another pair. And so 5 plus additive inverse 3 is 2.
What if we just do the subtraction 5 minus 3? We can model subtraction by taking things away. And so we have 5 positive chips, from which we'll remove 3 chips. And we'll have 2 chips left over. And again, let's compare and generalize. We found 5 plus the additive inverse of 3 is 2. But we also found that 5 minus 3 is 2. And again, if you look, we have the same numbers in both cases, except we're doing something slightly different. And this leads to a general rule. For any real numbers, a minus b is the same as a plus the additive inverse of b. So for example, if I want to find 18 plus the additive inverse of 7, that's the same as 18 minus 7, which is going to be 11.